the VLF4 and 5, 4 and 5 connect with the fibronectin. That is the first one. The second is laminin. So, VLS6 connects with the laminin. So, VLA4, 5 and 6 allow a T cell to home into the thymus and stick there. Now, remember thymus is a construction. So, thymus is something which is present above the heart here up to 13 years old um, child and after that it becomes involuted and there is it becomes fatty tissue. But before that it is active tissue present above the heart behind the sternum. Now, this thymus is made up of the roads and scaffolding. So, what it has is that it has connective tissue on which cells are attached. So, let us say this is connective tissue. It has cells attached to this and then there are roads between these connective tissue cells and what happens is that, so let us say these are the cells. So, when a proud T cell, when a thymocyte, a proud T cell and a child T cell, newborn, when it passes through these roads, this T cell is educated. But the important thing to remember is this T cell has to be able to live there. And how does that happen? VLA4, 5 and 6. That is one. The other very important thing is that this thymocyte, when it is inside the thymus, so if I make the thymus a little bit bigger over here, so I'm going to take this out. I'm going to make a little bit of a larger thymus. So, let's say these areas are subcapsular areas and then you know that there is subcapsular area of the thymus, then there is cortical part of the thymus and then there is central medullary part. When we will talk more in detail for the, for the training of the T cells, we will talk about it that what, what happens in the cortical part and what happens in the medullary parts. But this is subcapsular part, this is corticomedullary part between the cortex and the medulla. The cells, the dendritic cells and epithelial cells, so these are epithelial cells present here, then there are dendritic cells present here. And again, we will talk about these dendritic cells, these are sitting there to educate, to train these T cells these secrete chemical factors. What do they secrete? They secrete CXCL12 and CCL25. These are chemokines. Remember that the chemokine which has CXC pattern that is cysteine, some other amino acid cysteine on the amino end of the protein and this is the alpha chemokines. Right? And then we have CC pattern which is cysteine, cysteine residue on the amino side and that is a beta chemokine, right. So, these chemokine normally have corresponding receptors on the T cells which are called chemokine receptors CCRs. So, CCXC or CC normally have receptors on the T cell which are called CCRs. So, the T cell which is here, so we are going to make a T cell here. This T cell, this T cell has CCR, chemokine, receptor and what are the CCRs which are present here? We have CCR4 and we have CCR9. So, CCR4 and we have chemokine receptor 9, CCR9. These receptors respond to chemokine 12 and the chemokine 25. So, 12 act on the 4 and 25 act on the 9. 12 and 25 and then 12 works on the receptor 4 and the 25 works on the receptor 9 what is the benefit of that? So, the, this is funny, the 12 is really funny. So, 12 allows a T cell to move within the thymus from the corticomedullary junction to the subcapsular sub area. This is a very interesting thing, it is like 
the these T cells have gotten GPSs attached to them. These GPSs allow them to navigate into the system and not only going from the bone marrow to the thymus, but within the thymus when they are being educated and they move around even that movement is helped by the cells and the chemical systems present inside the thymus. So very important thing what are you not going to forget now VLA 4, 5 and 6 these would allow the T cell to stick in the thymus. 4 and 5 would allow it to be connected to the fibrin actin and 6 would allow it to be connected to the laminin and then there are chemical um, uh, chemokines which are being secreted and then there are chemical receptors. So a new T cell which has just been generated from the bone marrow this is going to be called thymocyte what is it having it has VLA4, 5, 6 as the, as the antigens on the surface and it has two receptors CCR4 and CCR9. What do we have on the thymus side? On the thymus side we have fibronectin and laminin and then we have dendritic cells and the epithelial cells secreting six CXCL12 and CCL25 and these are acting on these receptors. So this is how a T cell would stay in the thymus in the beginning. Why does it not go in the lymph node or the other tissues? Because over there it does not have the same ligands present so it cannot have the same adhesions on the other tissues very simple. Wherever you put the breaks for the T cell that is where it is going to go and stop. So when the new T cell is present the breaks are in the thymus so it is going to go and stop there. Okay. So once a T cell has become educated and we have not talked about how it becomes educated we will have a complete lecture about it but here once a T cell has become educated we are talking journey of a T cell from the bone marrow to the thymus to the lymph node to the infected area. So bone marrow to thymus thymocyte has reached there we know how VLA4, 5, 6 we know CXCL12 we know CCL25 we know CCR4 we, we know CCR9. Now it has gone to it needs to go to lymph node after it gets trained it needs to go to the lymph node. There is one more important thing though or interesting thing this CCL25 this CCL25 in the thymus really helps this T cell not to die this is anti apoptotic protein for the T cell. So when apparently when the T cells go to the thymus and while they are getting educated or trained they have a tendency to commit suicide they have a tendency to become apoptotic. So this CCL25 is continuously encouraging them do not do not die do not die keep working keep going through the test. So probably this test is so depressing that they just want to kill themselves but the CCL25 keeps them alive and keeps them working. So I would just write here for our reference VLA4, VLA5 they connect with the fibronectin, VLA6 connects with the laminin and then we have CXCL12 acts on the CCR4 receptor and then we have CCL25 which acts on the CCR9 receptor and the function is these, these are adhesions adhesion and these are one is so the 4 is adhesion and migration and 9 is anti apoptotic. So that is what is happening on the thymus. Now once a T cell has become educated inside the thymus now it is called a naive T cell. A T cell which has become educated inside the thymus has now the name naive T cell. This T cell does not know what is the mission it is educated it knows I am going to go pick up an antigen and fight with it or I will help the system it does not know what to do it does not have the antigen around it. So now what it does is it takes those antigens off it takes those expressing proteins off and what does it start expressing it starts expressing so this T cell so I am going to I am going to write it here. So now the T cell which needs to go to the lymph node that T cell is going to start expressing some proteins too. So let us say this is our naive T cell so it is naive it does not really know what to do what is the mission in life. So this is also that is what is called T helper 0 cell. So this naive T cell or T helper